Hi there. Welcome back to Ask Amy. I have a question today from Lizzie. And it's a little bit more of a, a check from Lizzie to see if she's on the right track than it is a question, but I'll speak to it a bit and we'll see where it takes us. So she says that in one of my podcasts, I said that we're always doing the best at the time given our current thinking. She says, my initial thought was, what about situations where we might not be doing the right thing, which she has in quotes, because we purposely sabotage or otherwise consciously act so it is not doing our best. But then it occurred to me, not consciously doing our best is still doing our best because anything we think to do at the time is all we can do, even if we're flitting from one idea to another. Am I on the right path? So yes, Lizzie, you're on the right path. I love what you're seeing around this. So it's so easy, so easy to look at the world, look at our, our behaviors and say that I didn't do the best I could. So this thing, this, this idea that you said you heard in a podcast, right, of we're always doing the best we see to do. And in fact, I think what makes that phrase a little bit confusing even is the word best. So I would say it this way now, we're, we're always doing the only thing we can do. That's going to make a lot of heads explode. <laughs> like, what do you mean we're always doing the only thing we can do? No, there are other options, and I could be doing something else, and I could have done something else. And it for sure looks like this, for sure. And in fact, sometimes even in a moment, I mean, in a very, in a moment, we, we are faced with a situation where we're like, well, I could... Uh, run into that car in front of me because I'm so angry at how they're driving or I could just take a deep breath and see if this will pass and we choose to run into the car in front of us hopefully not really but you know like that's what happens that's a situation where it's like duh obviously you did not do the best you could you saw multiple options and you chose this option that was the wrong choice no question so our lives are full, 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 full of these, of examples like that, right? Where, where it's very easy to say that we or someone else is not doing the best they can because they know better, because they had other choices, because maybe they even thought of those other choices in the moment. Very, very easy to live in that world of things could have and should have been different. But when we really back up from this, what you say, Lizzie, is so important. You say, we think to do, anything we think to do at the time is all we can do. Whether it, whether our mind gets on board and says, oh, this is your best choice right now, or whether your mind comes on board and says, this is the horrible choice. See, the mind is a narrator. The mind is just giving an overlay. The mind is narrating what is happening in life. So when your mind says, smash the car in front of me, take a deep breath and let this settle, that's your mind playing stuff out. That's not your mind deciding. Minds don't decide. This is huge. Minds don't decide things. They give commentary. They're, they're, they're after the fact. They talk about they talk about what's going on and they give a nice coherent uh, overlay, a nice coherent narration that sure makes it feel like they're in charge and that's exactly how they want it. It makes it sound like they're the ones deciding and that there are these two options and you're going to choose the good one or maybe you're going to be bad and choose the bad one. That's for sure how a mind will make it sound, but that is not exactly what's happening. What's happening is we are all, always only doing the thing that we see to do. So even when it is those two options, when your foot slams on the gas and you hit the car in front of you, rather than taking that deep breath, that is what showed up through you. Sure, over here, there was an image of you taking a deep breath, doesn't matter. What, what life brought forward, what showed up through you and what was acted on is the other choice. That was the only way it could be. For us to say, oh, it could have been different or it should have been different, we're living in absolute, complete fiction. I mean, it's fantasy land. Fantasy land, honestly. 
it would it takes a mind to look backward and said and say these things were there and these things could have happened but the wrong one happened and the right this one happened instead and and to just tell a story about that it's like it just it just doesn't make any sense when you really start to look at it and it feels so true and so real because we've been living in this counterfactual world counterfactual meaning full of ideas and stories about things that didn't actually happen and that aren't true or real forever we are so conditioned into a counterfactual world where there's lots of options and lots of possibilities and you're in control right you're this is the crux of the whole thing there's a you who's making all your choices and you're in control and you're in charge of what you do and you could have and should have done differently the whole thing that whole thing is a story how in the world could you and should you have done differently how how it's not possible you did the thing that rose to the surface and that was done what was done is what was there to be done it's only a mind in a counterfactual world that makes up a fan an alternate ending and says this this one was possible too well, that one wasn't possible to. The only one that happened is the one that was possible. So I think it's a huge point. Lizzie, you say it really clearly, and you're totally on the right track. So I love what you're seeing, and I'm not saying this to uh, to go against anything you're saying. You said it just super clearly, like, yeah, we're only doing the best we can do, even when our mind says it was the wrong choice, 100%. I'm just wanting to take this a little step further to help you see, because think about this. If things literally could not have been or cannot be right now different than they are, if, if different than how they are is off the table, start to sit with that a bit and see the freedom that that brings. Literally, every little bit of suffering is a, our mind saying things should not have been this way or they should not be this way. Things should be different. It, what if that's a complete made up fantasy land. I mean, it just can't be. We can sit and imagine it and fantasize about it and have opinions about it all we want, but it doesn't really matter. Things are how they are always, and they always have been, period, and that's the only way they ever can be. It just takes a human jumping into their imagination to say otherwise. And what we do is we jump into our imagination, we say otherwise, and then we suffer like crazy, and it's ridiculous. <laughs> so I hope something in here starts to land, even if your mind is spinning and exploding and hating everything I'm saying, which it probably will be, and that's totally normal and fine. See if something in here sort of makes sense. Like, wow, what if things literally cannot be different than they are? Because for them to be different, it takes an act of imagination. That, that's the only way they can be different is if we imagine them different. And that has nothing to do with anything. That's just what, what our imagination is doing. Really, really huge. A lot of, lot of potential for freedom in this. So thank you, Lizzie, for sending your hunch. You're on the right track. I love it. And thanks, everyone, for listening. Send your questions to askamy at thelittleschoolbigchange.com, and I will be back here every Monday. Have a great week.